hello everyone and welcome to this video and in today's video we will do this auto retrieval or otb auto retrieval so otb authentication is very common these days when the user can log in using their phone number and we want to authenticate this phone number and we're going to send an otb or a digits or an otb code to the user's phone via sms and then the user can enter this sms and uh, a lot of apps have this auto retrieval so the user doesn't have to for example open the message uh, go ahead and copy that otb code and get back to the app and paste it so i'm going to show you a demo for this uh, tutorial so there is an otb will be sent using the emulator and we will uh, capture this otb and get this number and populate this text uh, field with it so the user doesn't have to enter those digits uh, manually and i think this is very useful so let's go to my android studio and i'm going to show you the ui and the ui is looking very simple we just have a text input in text so that the user can enter this otp and of course after you parse this otp i'm going to show you how you can populate any view it doesn't have to be a normal uh, edit text it could be a pin view it could be some third party uh, pin view or something like that so the first step is to add the dependency so i'm going to the build.gradle module level build.gradle and i'm going to add this dependency this is the play services authentication api for phone okay and i'm gonna put this in the description so you, you can just uh, copy it so we only need one single dependency so let's go to my main activity and everything will be very straightforward so let's start and we're going to start off by creating some constant and we're going to make a request so this will be something like a permission request something like that so we need a request code for it like when you want to open the camera or something like that this is very similar so we need a request code uh, for it and the next step is going to create a broadcast receiver so we will register this broadcast receiver to get that sms and then we can uh, retrieve it so i'm going to call it sms uh, verification receiver and i'm going to extend this broadcast uh, receiver so of course every podcast receiver has an on receive method that will be co get called when this broadcast receiver receives some intent or some action so this is an on receive method and inside this on receive method we're going to check the intent action and we're going to compare it is it equal to sms retriever so this is from the authentication api and we're going to compare it and make sure this is the sms retrieved action so if that's true we're going to continue and then we're going to get the extras we're going to get the extras from this uh, intent and of course this is the next step from this extra we're going to get the sms retrieved status so we're going to get the extras and get a specific item in that extras which is the extra status and this will be a status of object and then we can See what this is status object and we're gonna compare this is status code and and it's gonna be two st status so the first uh, thing it could be success and in this case the user allowed the app to retrieve this specific S SMS so in that case we can get the consent intent using get parcelable intent and then we're going to get this extra consent intent so in this case 
we will show this dialogue. The dialogue will this dialogue. I'm gonna show it again for you guys. So this is a dialogue, not gonna be an activity, but it will be a dialogue. So it will ask the user to allow this app to read the message or not. So if you click allow, you can retrieve it. Okay. So let's get uh, back and then we will start the activity to show the uh, dialogue. So we're gonna start activity for result and we will send the request code. So we're gonna send the request code so we can know uh, what the user decides. So the user may allow or deny this uh, request. So, okay, so we have this success status, the success uh, clause and we can catch the exception if an exception happened you can handle it whatever you want and then we're gonna test the next status which is will be timeout so what if the user doesn't click in this case doesn't click allow or click allow or uh, deny it will just leave this uh, bottom sheet as it is so in this case we will have this timeout and then you can handle this timeout uh, yourself whatever you want and then we can just close those uh, brackets so we have this uh, sms broadcast receiver and we're gonna check for a specific action and if we found that action we're gonna get the extras to get the status and then we can check if it's success. Then we can show this uh, uh, dialogue. Else it's a timeout, so we don't show anything, or we can just inform the user about it. So this is the first step: create a broadcast receiver. So the next step here is to define an intent filter. So every receiver, and of course there is two ways to register this broadcast receiver so the first is, uh, method is to declare it in the android manifest and the second way is to do it programmatically using kotlin or java so i'm going to do it programmatically i'm going to define this uh, intent filter right here and this intent filter for a specific action so in in other words i want to trigger on receive method for the broadcast receiver this is on receive method i'm going to trigger it for this specific uh, action and then i'm going to call register receiver this is an activity method and then we can send the receiver object that we created above and then the intent filter and finally we'll specify the permission so there is a specific uh, permission in the sms retriever last field is null we don't need it and the next step here is to uh, initiate the auto refill just created a method for that and this this is just gonna start the process it will be a very simple method right here and we're gonna call sms retriever get client and here we set the user consent to null and of course you can listen for specific numbers so if you only want to listen or receive uh, this uh, sms from specific num specific number like it could be your company number or something like that you can do that but here i just passed null so we receive all kind of uh, sms's then we can retrieve those sms so the next step is to add an incomplete listener and just to make sure if the task is successful we're gonna log it okay simple log statement and else we're gonna fail okay and this is uh auto refill and finally we need to override on activity result and i know there is a better ways to handle this kind of things because this starts for activity result an activity result was deprecated but we need to keep it as simple as possible so we start this activity for result using this specific request code so i'm gonna go down here and override on activity result 
and check for the request code and make sure it is SMS consent request. And then we're going to make sure if the request code, the result, okay. So we have a result. We successfully parse it an SMS. And then we can get from the data, we're going to get the message. And we're going to get the message content. That is the whole message content. Not only the OTB, but the whole message uh, content. And the next step is to get and filter only the digits. So we're going to get use the filter and make sure it's a digit. Otherwise, we will just return an empty string. So this is the OTB code. So if you have a message like your OTB code is 1234, we, we will only get 1234 here in this OTP code. So we will just filter out the characters and only get uh, the digits. So we have the OTP code. We can do whatever we want with it. So in this case, we will just fill the OTP field. I'm gonna do binding OTP field, edit text, and then we're gonna set this text. The last step, of course, is to set the selection. And this is optional, of course, if you are using, for example, a bin view, a bin view library or something like that. You don't have to move the cursor around. But if you have a normal edit text, you have to do that. And that's all, of course. Else, if the result is not OK, we can log it for now. Permission is denied. And we're going to close this code. So let's go ahead and go through this one more time. We have a broadcast receiver to receive a specific action. And this specific action is that an SMS has been received. And if that's the case, we're going to get the status. And if success, we're going to launch the request for the SMS content. So we can get this SMS content. And of course, if the user allows this, we're going to get the message, get the OTB and populate it. And of course, for the broadcast receiver to work, you need to register it uh, before doing all of this. So you need to register it as soon as possible. So we do that in this on create uh, method. And uh, let's go ahead and run the application. I have my emulator uh, right here. And to be able to receive this OTP message, we're going to click right here the extended controls and then we're going to go to of course it will be location and then we're going to go to the phone and then you can type any message i will just type your otb code is for example something like that one two three four five and this is the number it doesn't matter and we're going to click send message and notice how we will get this uh, dialogue and once we click allow it will parse this code and then populate it in your uh, field. And of course, after you populate your OTB, you need to validate it. So in a real world app, you will have, for example, an OTB validation API that will send this code to the server. And the server will, will validate it and make sure it's correct before moving the user to the next screen and that's all for today thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications have a nice day